cameras. Uh, I'm going to introduce him very, very, with this minimal, most incredible introduction that I can think of. <laughs> Sitting next to me is the only human being in the history of the Homo sapien species <laughs> who owns an Academy Award for Best Picture and two Super Bowl rings. Please welcome Steve Tisch. <laughs> Nicely done, John. <laughs> Very nicely done. Now, Steve, uh, of course, you have a big presence in sports as the co-owner of the New York Giants, as your father was. Uh, and you co-own it, by the way, with uh, the original co-owner's son, too. Right? Yes. Uh, my father's partner was Wellington Mara. Mm -hmm. And ironically, Wellington and my dad, in, ninth, in 2005, passed away within three weeks of each other. So my partner is John Mara, who was Wellington's son. Fantastic. Uh, but of course, this is a film school. Yeah. So um, I want to ask you really more to that point. As a filmmaker, you recently hired Ben McAdoo as head coach. <laughs> He's and also a filmmaker. Is he? No. <laughs> and since, <laughs> since his first head coaching job is with you, uh, what's your expectations for the season? I mean, are we talking Super Bowl? Are we talking rebuilding? <laughs> you know, I think, let me, let me sort of put it in, um, in terms of a movie. When we set out on the first day of production to make a movie, we have expectations, sometimes realistic, sometimes unrealistic. I've learned being in the film business for 45 years and the pro football business for 12 years, expectations need to be realistic. So I'm guardedly optimistic about the Giants 2016 season. I'm very excited that we have the second youngest head coach in the NFL because for the last 12 years, we had the oldest head coach in the NFL. So I think, uh, I think as long as our players can stay healthy, we're going to do pretty well. Injuries has historically been a big issue going into the last five seasons. Today, we're healthy. Uh, if Victor Cruz can come back and play for the Giants this year, I'll be very happy. Eli Manning last year had his best year statistically as our quarterback. And uh, he's going into his, I think his 13th season. Yeah. So. Well, we wish you luck. I'm optimistic. How many Giants fans are there? I'm a Giants fan. Good. How many Cowboys fans? Good. OK, I'm, let's go. How many Los Angeles Rams fans? Yeah. <laughs> They're coming to LA. They're here. Um, OK, let's get into movies a little bit. You started really young. You and I are about the same age. I was in college. You must have been, too, when you were a PA on a couple of movies. You did a PA for um, uh, John Appleton five years before Rocky and also for Otto Preminger in the same year. What I wanted to ask you well, was, did you know then? Yes. Did you, you knew that? I knew then. I worked on a movie that John Appleton directed the summer of 1970. Cry Uncle. Cry Uncle. I was still in college. After I graduated from Tufts in May of 1971, I worked on a picture that Otto Preminger directed called Such Good Friends. Production finished in September of 71, and on November 1st, 1971, I moved to LA from New York. Five days later, on November 5th, I started work for Peter Goober, who was head of production at Columbia Pictures. And Columbia was in the original studio on the corner of Sunset and Gower. <laughs> so I've been doing this for a while. I was going to ask you about Peter Goober, of course, a legend in the business and uh, the head of production at that time, as he was again later at Columbia. Yeah. What was his influence on you? He's quite a guy. And he, I really can sit here today 
almost 45 years later and say the five years I spent at Columbia, which is appropriate mm -hmm. addressing you, <laughs> uh, was for me getting a graduate degree from an unbelievable, an unbelievable mentor. I started working for Columbia when I was 22. I think Peter was 27 when he was head of production. And he was extremely generous with his time, his knowledge, his enthusiasm was and still is contagious. He is an unbelievable uh, visionary, his energy, his excitement, his enthusiasm, his passion for what he's doing today is as strong as it was when he started at Columbia, I guess, 50 years ago. And ironically, today, tonight, Peter is the co-owner of the Golden State Warriors, and tonight, his team is playing for a championship. Mm -hmm. And please, no one let me know what the score is. <laughs> Don't let you know. You're going to watch it when you get off. Don't let me know. So I can really say Peter Goober was my mentor. Just a fantastic person to spend uh, the first five years of my time in this industry working with Peter. He was just so generous with, you know, with his time. And, uh, well, when every you time I see him, you know, we just reminisce about the old days. Yeah. And the old days don't seem like 45 years ago, but they were. Yeah, but it was a hot time. And, and it was a great you know. time. I mean, it was such a transitionary period in, uh, in, in Hollywood. In the new golden age, they call it. Exactly. If any of you have read that book, uh, Easy Riders and Raging Bulls, that book really beautifully captures the transition in the film industry in Los Angeles, starting with Easy Rider and going through the late 60s into the 70s, into the early 80s. And it was an amazing, amazing time out here. Well, when you left uh, Columbia, I think you, you did a picture on your own, you did Outlaw Blues, right? Yes. But then you, you hooked up with John Avnet shortly after. Well, I, I left Columbia in, I think, late 1976. One of the first projects I submitted to Columbia was a script written by Bill Norton called Outlaw Blues. Columbia thought about it, ultimately decided they weren't going to make it. Unfortunately, uh, two weeks later, I had set it up at Warner Brothers, and six months later, I'm producing Outlaw Blues in Austin, Texas, with uh, Peter Fonda and Susan St. James. Mm -hmm. And in 1970, early 77, Warner Brothers wanted the budget to be a million eight, and we were fighting to make it for a million eight fifty, <laughs> <laughs> which, which was a fight back then. Yeah, I mean it was fifty thousand dollars for the, you know, it was worth fighting over. Yeah. Well, I know you